with me if you want to see something beautiful. My flowers are both near and foreign. I was reared in the garden, you know. We all went down this morning and the trees looked beautiful. Every one of them is growing and when the west wind blows, the pines lift their light leaves and sing. There's no more snow. Spring is here. Oh, I have always been attached to mud. Two things I have lost to a childhood, the rapture of coming home barefoot after having lost my shoe in the mud, waiting for cardinal flowers, and the mother's reproof, which was more for my sake than her weary own, for she frowned with a smile. Oh, that a pansy is transitive is its only pang. Dear old-fashioned little flower, Eden is old-fashioned too. The birds are antiquated fellows. Heaven does not change her blue, nor will I, the little heartsons, ever be induced to do. There were several pleasure parties of which I am a member, and on our rambles, we found many and many beautiful children of spring, which I will mention to you now and see if you have found them. Hush, Pegi awakens. The crocus stirs her lids. Rador's cheek is crimson. She is dreaming of the wood. Then turning from them reverent, their bedtime tis, she said. The bumblebees will wake them when April woods are red. Apigia, crocuses, azalea, rodors. You've heard of these, haven't you, miss? Yes. Oh, here's another one. A rainbow come from the fair, a vision of the world cashmere I confidently see, or else a peacock's purple train feather by feather on the plain that fritters itself away. As flakes of snow stood yesterday on fence and roof and twig, the orchis binds her feathers on for her lover dawn the sun. Do you know what flower it is that I'm talking about? No, the fringed orchid. <laughs> oh, today is beautiful. Oh, it's just as bright, just as blue, just as green and as white and as crimson as the cherry trees in bloom. And the grass is just waving. The dandelion's pallid tube astonishes that grass. And winter instantly becomes an infinite alas. The tube uplifts a signal bud and then a shouting flower. The proclamation of the suns that sculpture is on. Oh. Oh, I must just show you. A bee by the windowsill eating a lilac. He's got it. The lilac. The lilac. The lilac is an ancient shrub, but ancienter than that. The firmamental lilac upon the hill tonight, the sun subsiding on its course, bequeaths this final plant to contemplation, not to touch the flower of Occident. Pardon me, how's your garden? It's good. Beautiful. Would you like to hear about my garden? Oh, my garden. My garden like the beach denotes there be a sea. That summers, such as these, the pearls she fetches, such as me. Oh, sweet and soft summer. The maple trees in bloom and grass green and sunny places. You know who June is? I'd give her roses a day from Zanzibar and lily tubes like wells, 
Bees by the furlong, straits of blue, navies of butterflies sail through in dappled cowslip dells. Oh, roses. Roses. Paris could not lay the fold. Belted down with emerald, Venice could not show a cheek of tents so lustrous, meek. I'd rather wear her grace than an earl's distinguished face. Royalty enough for me to subdue the bumblebee. I went out before tea tonight. I was training the honeysuckle over the fence, and <laughs> the robins were stealing the strings for their nest. Quite, quite like they used to. Over the fence, strawberries grow. Over the fence, if I could climb, if I tried, I know berries are nice. <laughs> but if I stained my apron, God certainly would scold. Oh dear, I guess if he were a boy, He'd climb if he could. May I ask a question? Why do people rave over the beauty of daisies? They look to me like hard-boiled eggs cut in two. Oh, <laughs> now oh, the lily of the field. Oh, I shall never pass one without being chagrined for Solomon and son for being in love with the lily anew. That if I were sure that no one would see me, I might make those advances as well, which in the afterlife I should repent. Well, I am of the field, you know. And though quite at home with the dandelion, make before a sorry figure in the drawing room. Oh. The days are hot. The weeds, they pant like it's the center of summer. They say the corn likes it. Though I was certain that there were others, how deeply I was deluded. Summer has laid her simple hat upon its boundless shelf. We are reveling in a gorgeous drought. The grass is painted brown. The day is parched and handsome, though the grass is the color of a statesman's shoe and only the butterfly rises to the occasion. We go to sleep with a peach in our hand, and wake up with the stone. But the stone is the pledge of summers to come. Summer brings and begins to have the look for a peruser of an enchanting book, reluctantly but sure perceives again upon the backward leaf. Autumn begins to be in fur. The name of it is Autumn. The hue of it is blood. An artery upon the hill, a vein upon the road. <laughs> we are by September, and yet my flowers are as bold as June. There's not yet frost. Summer has two beginnings, beginning once in June, beginning in October, affectionately again. <laughs> Evenings are longer with the autumn. That is nothing new. And how are my other blooms? Oh, very well, I thank you. On the bleakness of my lot, a bloom I strove to raise, late my garden of a rock, yielded 
great and maize. Oh, the garden is amazing. We have had beets and beans and splendid potatoes for three weeks now. The way the sun shone through the beet's leaves as if through a glass of burgundy, setting their, their veins on fire. The products of my farm are these, sufficient for my own, and here and there a benefit unto a neighbor's bend. And with us, tis the harvest all the year, for when the frosts begin, we just reverse the zodiac and fetch the acres in. The cider's almost done. We'll have some by Saturday. Oh, at any rate, it's Sunday noon. The men are picking the apples and the pretty borders are leaving the trees. And the birds and the bees. Besides the autumn, the poets sing a few prosaic days. A little this side of snow and that side of haze. Perhaps a squirrel may remain my sentiments to share. Grant me, O oh Lord, a sunny mind, thy windy will to bear. My plants, they've on gone to camp. <laughs> Their tender armor insufficient for the crafty nights. I'm sure your garden <laughs> was okay with dying. I do not think that mine was, for she perished with beautiful reluctance, like an evening star. We shall not mind so small a flower, except it quiet bring our little garden that we lost back to the lawn again. So spicy her carnation nod, so drunken reel her bees. So silver steal a hundred flutes from out a hundred trees, that who shall ever sees this little flower, by faith may clear behold, that the bobo links around the throne and dandelion's gold. Which hazel? a lovely little alien. It looks to me a tensile friend, but with straighter fringes. Is there not a dim suggestion of a dandelion? If her hair were unraveled and she grew on a twig instead of a tube. Though this is timidly submitted. Oh. There's a certain slant of light, winter afternoons, that oppresses like the heft of cathedral tombs. Heavenly hurt it gives us, we can find no scar, but internal difference where the meaning are. When it comes, the landscape listens, shadows hold their breath, and when it goes, tis like the distance on the look of death. I do not go away, but the grounds are ample. Most travel to me, and the few that I knew I've seen since my father died. When it shall come my turn, I want a buttercup. Doubtless that the grass will give me one, for does she not revere the whims of her flitting children? I wish, I wish until I tremble to touch the ones that I love before the hills are red, are gray, are white, are born again. My house of the house of snow. True, sadly a few. 
My garden is a little knoll with faces under it. And only the birds sing now that the, or the trees sing, now that the birds are absent. Like brooms of steel, the snow and wind had swept the winter street. The house was hooked. The sun sent out faint deputies of heat. I have a permanent rainbow by filling the window with hyacinths, which science will be glad to know, a cargo of carnations. Oh, I wish I could show you the hyacinths that embarrass us with their loveliness, though to cower before her is perhaps unwise. <laughs> but beauty is often timidity, much oftener pain. Winter is good. His ore delights, italic flavor yield. To intellects inebriate with summer or the world, generic as a query and a heart as a rose, invited with asperity, but <laughs> welcome when he goes. <gasps> Haven't we had delightful weather for a few weeks now? <laughs> it seems as if old winter has forgotten himself. Come with me. Oh, if you want to see something beautiful. There's no more snow. Thank you so much. Thank you.